Hey everybody, so this video is about glass. Short, five, ten minute video. Okay, so I'm going to start with this early glass, Georgian. So the period from 1714 to around 1830. This is Wuthering glass. You can see the spirals in it there. If you look closely. Tell it's early glass by the imperfections, okay. The little bubbles, lines, serrations, and everything. And these would have been used probably in the medical industry or scientific industry. Next, we'll have a couple of glasses. So, for this, some of that's beautiful. That's nice. So these are quite similar in style, but one's a bit earlier than the other. Can you guess which one? Okay, so a couple of things. I'm going to look at the bases here. This one has had a pontle, but it's fairly smooth. Okay. This one also a pontal and that's a bit rougher I've got a nice thick rolled foot double bolsters on this one which is these knobs here if you like these are late Georgian where this one is probably 1820 1830s the ones you want to look for are the the 1720s 30s 40s higher quality this one's later, maybe the 1850s, 1860s. So I'm not sure if you know that glass was blown in the mould from around 1820s. Okay. And these a couple of nice Victorian decanters with the stoppers hand painted in little flowers, forget me nots. And these have a really rough pontal. You know, if you've rubbed your thumb over there, there's a good chance you're gonna cut it wide open. Now there's something got about these. They're both Victorian, early Victorian I would say. 1860s, 1880s. But this one has been blown in a mould. You can only just see the seam down here. Very tricky to see. You can see it there. Yeah. This one hasn't. This one's been hand blown. So that seam is where two parts were blown and added together while you're molten. What you're looking for with these, stick the, de the decanter on a hard surface, put the cap in, the bottle top and give it a slight turn and you should be able to pick the decanter up if it's empty okay or turn it over and it not come out so these are lovely they're small why this is small back in the day the contents of these would have been very 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 expensive okay <clears throat> Now have these couple of bottles. These are later. The Red Wardian. Nice colours. Cheap, easy to pick up. This would have been an ink bottle. And you can see even though it's later, it still has lots of imperfections, lots of seed bubbles, which I find very, very nice. There's no pontal. Okay. On either of these. Cheap glass advertising bottles again full of serrations lines bubbles very attractive colour this one which most of you will have seen not to be taken poison bottle coal bulb blue that was blown in a mould added together some of the poisons look out for them some of them like the skulls can be worth thousands of pounds I 
That's my favourite poison bottle. It's quite large. The cork is firmly fixed in there. Large embossing poison. Ribbed. Sounds like there's something dried up inside. The label's perished, unfortunately. Some things you're looking for, uh, if you've got a label on it, it's good reading quality then. It's worth more money. Coming up to a modern glass now. This was a car boot find and I paid £4 for it. It's by a modern artist, um, foreign Scott Sweezel. You can see the silvered imperfections which have been added okay into the mold beautiful beautiful and there talking about pontles before we have a pontle that has been ground and smoothed in okay a little bit way on the bottom that you're looking for with a bit later glass just to look for that way this is heavy and thick actually a lovely piece of glass This one cost us a pound. It's a bud vase. It's glass. It's probably 30 or 40 years old. Just like these little bits here. Smooth on the bottom. Okay. Just an oscillator. This one has a silver rim. Which we'll talk about at a later date. You can zoom in and... I'll give you when I find it what you're looking for the date the line in the area it was made London this is one of my recent finds from a car boot sale and I absolutely love it so it's a mirror and it's silvered glass and you can see the detail here, the imperfections, black ebonized wood with these little brass nails holding it together, often round and form round us. The back's very crude. We have the British silvered glass PB, it's my initials. Crudely put in the back with these nails, it's probably been cut down and put into another frame. If you look at the sides here, you can see where that would have been a larger flame. Okay, so someone's made it very well. I'm going to show you now. I want to show you some modern glass. Okay, pigs. Modern hand blown piggies. Highly collectible. And it's just, you've got to have a, a great skill to be able to do these. If you look at this one, you've got the little blue eyes dots on there. This one has a little coin in which you can date it. This one also, coin in there, 1961. Okay. Obviously, you could have put a really old coin in there. This one, it's pig and a pig. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Really well made. That's a larger one. Fun. And I bought a collection of pigs from my local auction. Uh, a tray or a box of them. Sold some of the best ones. And I paid about £30 for them. <coughs> the important glass to an antique dealer. Okay. Your magnifying glass. And if I see these, I pick them up. And I pick them up for a couple of quid. And the reason is I often lose them. I'm quite bad at that. So you definitely want one of these. 10, 20, 30 times jeweler's loop. Okay, just folds in. Ideal. This one I use at home. Much bigger magnification. These are just handy to have a couple of these in your pocket or in your bag that you always use. This is an earlier one. Horn again, 
So you're looking at variations of magnification from three or four up to 20 or 30. Okay, that's one thing you're looking for. Now, I'm a collector of natural history and oddities and curios. And one thing that I will often pick up if I can get them for four or five pounds, that is a tenner for these clocks in a glass case that easily comes off and this is it's quite a it's an okay made of clock itself is probably worth 10 or 20 pound okay I haven't got the winders for them but what I normally do is I'll take this mechanism off okay and fill it with something beautiful and put it in my room which is my man cave, which is my office. Okay, and I'll show you what I'll what I'll do with them. I do this type of thing. Okay, so beautiful shells. I'll keep these for a while, and then I'll I'll part with them. I'll sell them on eBay. Okay, you can you can imagine you can fill these with anything. Bones there, natural history. Like I say, it's not everyone's taste. Or it isn't curious, but this is my man cave. Okay. Proper man cave. Skulls and things I've picked up. Tribal. Feathers. More bottles. But my favourite piece of glass is this piece here. It's crystal. Rock crystal. Oh no, lead crystal sorry and it weighs 12 pounds in weight and it was done by an artist up here in the northeast she gave it to her then boyfriend who has a stall at time mouth he um he makes things out of wood amazing guy and it's life size the detail is amazing and I seen it on his stand and didn't want to sell it so I swapped him for a large pair of antlers and skull on a shield which cost me £10 in a job lot at another local auction the value on this he gives us all the details of the artist is £2,000 yeah he'd spread over with his girlfriend who has went on to be a fairly successful artist of sculptures in the North East few more bits of glass got your modern glass here more pigs this was um, vodka skull vodka a dome with butterfly in and this is a really early hand blown dome which was part of a light fitting Victorian and I filled it up with these little oddments of broken broken dolls that I had porcelain and bisque Again, yeah, not everyone's taste, but what is. So that's the video for you today, guys. Hope you've learned a couple of new things. Please subscribe, share, and tune in so I can carry on with these. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Peace.